Hey, Cornerstone family, it's Pastor Daryl. Just wanted to take a moment to say hello and, uh, and just share in a quick, some quick thoughts and a devotion with you uh, this evening as we're in a place where um, our community is about to be impacted by another storm. I, um, I was thinking back and just reflecting a little bit. Uh, living in Citrus County, I've always heard about a storm that you guys call the No Name Storm. It was before I actually moved here, but in 1993, in March of 93, the No Name Storm hit Citrus County. And um, the powerful storms often referred to by meteorologists as the storm of the century because the impacts of that storm extended way beyond Citrus County up into the Northeast with snow and things like that, very similar to what we saw with Hurricane Helene just coming through here. Um, and in just a few, a few days ago, as Hurricane Helene came through here, 13 days ago actually, um, thoughts of the no-name storm were rekindled in the hearts and conversations of so many people. I again heard those words as they've always compared those storms to what we're going through today. And for many of them, um, new historic highs were set in terms of the storm surge and the flooding that came through from the no-name storm. Um, Hurricane Helene was the third major hurricane to hit the Gulf Coast in less than 14 months. We had Hurricane Idalia, Hurricane Debbie, and now Hurricane Helene that's come through and impacted the Gulf Coast. And amazingly, those three storms impacted a space of about 30 miles of the Big Bend coastline. And now we sit at a spot today where we have another major hurricane that will impact the Gulf Coast in the coming days. Um, when this occurs, it will be the fourth to impact us within 14 months. And so I just kind of come to this moment where as the storms keep coming and we find our, our, ourselves in a place of a, a, as a community where our communities are already broken and vulnerable, I wanted to come and just turn our hearts to the things that we should always focus on when we come to a place where we feel broken and vulnerable and, and at a time of, uh, of just almost disbelief for what's taking place. Truth is, is I'm reminded that in scripture we should turn our hearts in moments like this to words of hope. Not words from me, but words from the Almighty. So let me share with you just some words of hope. Psalms 46 says, God is our refuge. He is our strength. He is our ever present in, in help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth may give way and the mountains may fall into the sea, though the waters will roar and foam, the mountains quake with their surging, we will not fear. Nahum 1 7 says, The Lord God, the, the Lord is good, our refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust him. Psalms 91 says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will send, the, I will say, the Lord, He is my, my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I will trust. Psalms 121 says, I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? Over and over again in scripture, we can continue to go to places like this where God tells us over and over again to come to him and let him be our resting place of hope, to come to him and let him be the place that we, we put our hope, that we can come even in times of encouragement. Deuteronomy 31, 6, 6 says, be, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord, your God is with you. It goes on to say, he never leaves you and he never forsakes you. I look at times like this and I think this. I think we can amazingly see the fingerprints of God in his people through all these things. Even in times of struggle, in times of challenge, in times of brokenness like this that we're experiencing in our communities right now, we can see the spirit of God shining brightly through his people. And that's one of the most amazing things in moments like this is that we get to see God pour his spirit into his people. And in times of brokenness, in times of darkness, God's people shine like a bright light in a dark world. And I want to remind you, we turn our faith to God, not just that we would have hope in ourselves, but that we would be reflectors of the hope that is in us that comes from him. And so I look around our community right now and even the things that we have already gone through, and that's what I see. I see a community that is resilient. I see a community that draws its hope from its almighty. I see a community that, that holds on to its faith and becomes encouragers, even in the face of adversity, even in difficulties in our communities. We hold on to our faith. We look forward um, and not backward. We know that even though today's days are hard, there are greater days ahead. We've been through the storms 
And we say going through the storm because we know that's what we do. We don't stay in the storm, but we come through it. God takes us through it in those moments. I see in moments like this as we go through it, our communities consistently showing resilience by coming together in times of crisis. Neighbors helping neighbors, volunteers stepping up. We've got more volunteers right now to come and meet the needs in the midst of the storm than we've had in years. And I see it in in every place. I see people getting on Facebook and, and asking for help. And then I see people responding by being the hands and the feet and serving the people in our communities in every way, getting trash off the, off the sides of the, the roads. I, I've seen uh, leaders and officials literally out uh, meeting in these communities and, and not just talking about doing stuff, but engaging and doing things. I see um, elderly out working and doing, feeding things and uh, out, out and engaging in places that you would never, and I see all the way down to the youngest child just walking down and, and helping his brother and sister and his neighbors in our communities. It is a moment where we see the resilience of our community shine bright. I see our community looking forward and knowing that we will rebuild what is lost. That in the midst of great loss, and there is great loss, that we know it won't stay that way and that we will rebuild what is lost. There is resilience and dedication that our homes will be restored, our lives will be restored, and that we do that together as brothers and sisters standing in the gap for one another. It reflects hope that even in great destruction, we know there are better times ahead. And I see the generosity of a community. I've seen community organizations like Daystar and United Way and the Baptist Disaster Relief standing in the gap to meet the needs of of the the local community and, and, and doing all they can. And I've seen an outpouring from the people in our communities to support those needs. And in all of these things, I look and I say, surely God is in this place. He's pouring his spirit out. In moments like this, we know that there are hard times ahead, but we also know that God never leaves us. He never forsakes us, and he uses us to be his hands and the feet. So as we look over the next couple of days and know there are hard days coming, we also can say that we know that God is with us. He will use us and that we will be his hands and feet in the community to come. Thank you so much for spending just a few moments with us. Uh, We say this around Cornerstone all the time that we want to love God and love people. And I don't think that's any more true than it is right now. I'm going to pray over you and then uh, Pastor Craig's going to simply share a song that's been on his heart. So let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in this time of uncertainty and trial, we turn to you. God, you are our refuge and our strength. Remember that even in the storms as they rage around us, that you are ever present help in times of trouble. Father, we thank you for for the resilience of your people that comes from being connected to you. God, thank you for placing us in these communities. And Father, thank you for the spirit of unity that shines through each and every one of them at the time that we most need it. Lord, we ask for your protection over every person, over every home, over every heart in the middle of these storms. Father, grant us courage and peace. Fill us with hope as we rebuild and restore. Strengthen those who are weary. Comfort those who are fearful. And remind us that, God, we are never alone. You are always with us. Help us to continue loving and supporting one another just as you have loved us. And Father, may your light shine through us. Father, shine through our actions. May we reflect your love to those around us, Father. And Father, we trust you and we trust your promise to never leave us or forsake us. And God, we ask for your guidance and your hand among us as we walk through the challenging times ahead. Dear Heavenly Father, in your name we pray. Amen. It reminds me of a story where Jesus was on the water uh, and he was with his disciples. And the wind and the waves picked up so badly. There was such a storm that all the disciples who were used to being on the water thought, we're going to die. I mean, so this was a pretty bad storm. And uh, interestingly enough, or ironically enough, Jesus was in the boat, but he was sleeping sound asleep. And the disciples were dying, and he was sound asleep. And they shook him, and they woke him up and said, Master, we're going to die. What's going to happen here? And he looked at him. I can imagine with a, a tender, compassionate heart saying, You have little faith. And he looks at the wind and the waves, and he says, Be still. And that's exactly what happened. And uh, we tend to drop our faith and lose our faith when things get hard and understandably so God knows that we're human he knows that we're just dust and so we become afraid like this is a storm for so many of us 
And I believe Jesus would say to us what he said to the disciples, be still. And maybe the circumstances won't change for a while, but he certainly can look into our hearts. He can speak to the wind and the waves in our heart and say, be still. And he can clothe us with his peace uh, in a time when it doesn't make sense to be at peace. He can give us sleep that is sweet. And, and so that's my prayer for you and me and my family, and that um, no matter how the waves might pick up, that Jesus would speak peace to our hearts. I have learned to kiss the waves that throw me up against the rock of ages. And I have found it to be true. No matter how I hurt, the pain is never wasted. It's when I'm broken I can say, I feel him nearest then It's there I hear the sweetest voice Reminding me again That God is good And God is love When strong winds blow He holds me close And whispers I won't you go so good by fear my Abba's here it heals me just to know I am his child so I think I'll let him hold me for a while He hears my faintest cries for him And delivers me from all my troubles And though I'm weak with so much need He's not ashamed of me and I'm so humble He's always been my hiding place my refuge from the storm He gives me grace and fills me with The strength to carry on Oh, cause God is good And God is love When strong winds blow He holds me close And whispers I won't Oh, what?